Hey guys, my name is CJ. This is the Supernote Nomad A6X2. And thanks to this little device, I don't think I'll ever need one of these ever again. Let's take a look. exactly is the Nomad A6X2? Now, if you read books, you probably have heard of a Kindle before, and if you're someone who writes or takes a lot of notes, then you've also probably heard of the Remarkable Tablet as well. Now, both of these are e-ink based devices that have a very specific place in the tech landscape. But the Nomad A6X2, well, it can do probably a little bit of both, but maybe sits a little bit closer to the Remarkable Paper Tablet, but a little bit smaller. So if you're a student, artist or anyone who craves a digital notebook that can simulate the tactile pen to paper feel, then the Supernote Nomad might just be the perfect note taking device for you. Now, one of the big advantages of e-ink devices and especially black and white ones is that they generally require far lower powered components and so is a far simpler device when it comes to hardware. And as a result, right off the bat, the A6X2 he was incredibly sleek and lightweight, weighing at just 266 grams. Now for context, that's only about 40 grams heavier than an iPhone 15 Pro Max, and that thing is made of titanium and glass. So as a digital notebook, it's quite compact, measuring at 191 millimeters tall, 139 millimeters wide, with a 7.8 inch e-paper display. And that's just a touch larger than a standard A5 sheet of paper, and is only about 6.8 mils thick, making it super thin and portable. Now along a single edge, you've got a power button on one side and a USB port on the other for all your charging needs. Now, as a side note, I do love the fact that it comes bundled with the 90 degree angled USB-C cable, and it makes it far more user-friendly when you wanna use it when it's on the charge. Now, overall though, the build quality is fantastic, even though it is made of plastic. Now, I've been using the really unique crystal version with that transparent back, and what it does is help emphasize that this device was built with sustainability and repairability in mind. There's a micro SD card slot right there, and you can see components like the battery and the logic board all within sight. Everything is just shielded by this single panel of plastic and secured by a ton of little screws all around the side. Now, fortunately, they bundle in a Phillips head screwdriver, which is awesome because it means Supernote is not only allowing you to access the rear components, but they're encouraging you to do it as well. Now, in a world where companies are increasingly hostile towards the right to repair, this is a really awesome and refreshing approach. It means that if components such as the battery ever needed to be replaced, then it is easy enough to do so without having to replace the entire device. In fact, Supernote have made it a thing to emphasize that that is part of their plans, where all the parts should be replaceable. So theoretically, one of these should last you an eternity. Now, in any case, as you continue to stare at that stunning back, you can see two pieces of metal on the top and bottom, and it wouldn't be a 2024 gadget if it didn't contain some magnets of some sort. Now, it turns out these guys provide a magnetic connection to the optional vegan leatherette folio. And as you can see, it does snap in very satisfyingly. You can also reverse the orientation. So you've got the choice of having the USB port and the power button on the bottom of the device. But honestly, these magnets are really tough. And even with a lot of shaking, it really does hold the device really solidly. Now the leatherette on the folio itself is nice and supple, but given that it's a vegan leather, it will be interesting to see how it ages. But having owned it for the last few months, it is holding up really quite well. Now on the side, you do get this little loop that holds the pen or stylus as well, and we'll touch on this little guy very soon. But on top of that, the folio has a very useful auto sleep wake function when the folio is open and closed, and that's really useful. And when the folio is closed, there's no real visible seams, and that gives it a really nice premium notebook-like appearance, which I'm a big fan of. So now let's move on to the real star of the show, which is the screen and the writing experience. So let's start with the screen first. 
Now, as mentioned before, it's a black and white e-ink display with a resolution equivalent to 300 pixels per inch. Now, if you're interested in the actual resolution numbers, I'll just list them down here somewhere. But all you need to know is that this e-paper display, as they call it, is really sharp, it's legible, and it's pleasing to the eye. And at the distances you'll likely be looking at the screen, it's gonna look pretty great. Now flanking the screens on the sides are two little sensitive touch pads that enable various gestures and is essential when navigating the UI. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. But what's also nice is that texture on the film sitting on the screen. Now super don't call it the feel right to self recovery soft film, bit of a mouthful, but let me tell you, it's pretty phenomenal. When you combine it with Supernote's pen with the ceramic never replace nibs, the writing experience gets pretty damn close to writing on paper. Now for someone that has basically lived most of their life writing and drawing on paper, honestly, it's a pretty convincing experience. Now the pen I've been using is the Heart of Metal pen with a brass body in a very classic fountain pen like style. It's solid, it's heavy, it feels really balanced in the hand when writing or drawing. And I personally like a pen with a little bit of heft. But if you're someone that prefers a lighter writing experience, well, you do have the option of choosing a plastic based pen like the push up standard one, of which that also clicks too. So, also maybe the perfect choice for chronic fidgeters. What's even cooler though, was that there are models that use Lamy Designs as well, a brand really well known for the quality of their pens. In fact, I own a black Lamy Safari fountain pen myself, which I think is a pretty handsome pen on its own. So in the end, you don't have to sacrifice style and familiarity when going digital with the Nomad. Now, when it comes to the software, the Nomad prioritized distraction-free note-taking and the built-in apps do a really decent job. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the Supernote is that there is no home screen per se. The Nomad defaults to the notebook app and to access other apps, you swipe down on the right touchpad. And from there, you can select a few other apps. Now there is a Supernote app store, but at the moment, the only apps you can download from there is a Kindle app, which makes sense because it's an e-reader and a separate drawing app called Atelier, which at its core, isn't actually that different to the note taking app. But outside of that, there are no unnecessary bells and whistles, at least so far. You get that note taking app, you've got an ebook reader that can open PDFs or other EPUB format documents. You've got a basic calendar, an email client, and that's pretty much it. There's a decent amount of customizability when it comes to using the device in the settings. So it's pretty flexible from that perspective. And whilst there aren't a heap of app options out of the box, Supernote has enabled side loading into the device because it does run a version of Android. And so you can find quite a lot of resources out there to side load apps. And there are various apps that work better than others for e-ink displays. And in fact, I've already tried my hand at side loading. That being said, there were a ton of bugs with even the most basic browser and file management apps. And on top of that, I can't pinpoint it to a specific sideloaded app, but doing so and experimenting did bug up my pen's functionality with the note taking app. It worked in other parts of the UI, but simply wouldn't work when trying to write notes. So in the end, I had to factory set the device because what use is a note taker that can't take notes. But as you can imagine, that's where the Nomad truly shines. The organization options are fantastic, being able to make multiple different notebooks, Plus you can customize the different options for lines and squares with different templates. And on top of this, there's also a real time recognition of handwriting. So if you ever needed to refer back to what you've written, you could just search for it, which is super useful. Just make sure your writing is legible though. What's also useful though, is that it has a usable accelerometer. So if you just have to have a little bit more horizontal space to write in a little bit more detail, you can simply flip it 90 degrees and the document will rotate as well. Now on top of the writing, the gestures built into the touchpads on the side, once you learn them can make you a bit more efficient as well. So the main ones is basically using two fingers and hold, and you can either erase things on the screen or lasso them and move them to other parts of the page. Now I found the eraser tool especially helpful to make quick adjustments during my note taking. Then a swipe up or down on the left activates the undo and redo function. And then a swipe upwards on the right refreshes the screen. 
Now, admittedly, the touch pads, I think, could be a little bit more sensitive because on more than one occasion, I would have to retry the, the gesture in order to activate it. But on the whole, it's been a pretty decent experience, and I think it's a really cool way to navigate the UI. Now, you can ultimately export your documents as PDFs or other formats, depending on what you need. And there's also a Supernote companion app available for Android and iOS where you can sync your files with the Supernote account. For me, this wasn't necessary because you can actually sync your device with other storage services like Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive, which again makes things very convenient. So it just means you don't necessarily need to have a Supernote account to get things working. Now I could go on and on about the various features seen here, but that's also because the battery life here is truly impressive. It can go on and on. It's got a 2700 milliamp hour battery, and with an e-ink, you can expect week of use on a single charge, making it perfect for on-the-go note-taking without having to worry about charging it. Plus, the battery is replaceable, which again is a massive plus from a future-proofing perspective, and something you rarely see with any device on the market, really. And fortunately, given how good the battery life actually is, you're not gonna be charging it all that often. Now, whilst the Nomad excels in many areas, there are just a few quirks worth considering though. The first thing is, well, there's no backlight. Now that means you'll need some form of external lighting for nighttime use. Now admittedly though, on the top, on the back, there are some pogo pins there. So perhaps one day we might see a little light accessory to come to fruition, who knows? The second thing though, is that the learning curve using it can be a bit steeper compared to other competitors. Now whilst the interface is intuitive, it is a little different to your traditional tablet user interfaces with no home screen, and there are some nuances to navigating the folders and templates. And on top of this, the screen's refresh rate does leave a little bit to be desired, which is standard for e-ink displays. Now it is super sharp and nice to look at, but because it's slow, it also doesn't often refresh the screen automatically for you. So you do see a bit of ghosting from time to time and you will require to manually refresh the screen on your own with a swipe up. It's not a major problem, but when you have long sessions of reading and writing, it can get a little distracting. But overall, the Supernote Nomad A6X2 is a fantastic e-ink device for those who prioritize a distraction-free pen to paper experience without the hassle of physical paper. The writing experience is top notch. And honestly, that's the main reason to pick up this device because I haven't come across another tablet with as convincing of a writing experience as this. The battery life is stellar as you'd expect. And the note taking app is overall pretty excellent with this handwriting recognition. However, the lack of a backlight, the fact that it's black and white screen and a limited app store might be a deal breaker for some people. But in the end though, the Nomad is always going to be a niche product. And that has been designed with a very specific target in mind and it absolutely nails its intention. Now, if you crave a small, portable digital notebook that enhances your focus, prioritizes the joy of writing, then this might be your perfect match. But if you absolutely need a device that can do more than just read and write with extensive customization, connectivity and a whole bunch of other connected features, you'll probably want to explore other options like the books or the remarkable tablet. Now it starts at 299 USD for the base model and the crystal version I've got goes up to 329 on its own. And then it goes up from there depending on the various accessories you might want to take with it. So it's not super cheap. And the people seeking out a device like this will know what they need in a device like this with the features it has. And for that, in my opinion, it is absolutely worth the money. For everyone else who just wants a simple e-reader, well, there are other products out there. But what do you guys think of the Supernote Nomad A6X2? Is this something that you've been looking for? Let me know why or why not in the comment section below. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like, subscribe for more, and ding the bell so you don't miss out. As always, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.